In this video, I've shipwrecked 1,000 players onto five remote islands in order to simulate the largest civilization that's ever been created in Minecraft. The players are entirely free to set their own goals, whether that's building a giant city, establishing an empire, starting a religion, or even just opening a restaurant. There is only one rule. If a player dies, they are dead forever. All the players work together to create thriving civilizations, or will disagreements between the islands lead to a massive world war? Well, to find out, sit back, relax, and pick a team to root for, as I present to you the 1000 Players Shipwreck Civilization Experiment. On day one, all 1,000 players spawned into the server and onto their shipwrecks. But they couldn't stay there, of course, so they crafted boats and rowed their way over to five unique islands. For the first few hours, all the players broke trees, mined for ores, and searched for a place to settle. However, despite the very similar start, it quickly became clear that each of the islands were developing their civilizations in very different ways. Firstly, on the largest island, St. Mary's, the players had set up a democratic council made up of five different guilds. One of these guilds, the distribution Guild, which was in charge of making sure everyone got their fair share of resources, had a mysterious problem. All of the nation's spruce wood was going missing. It turns out that a player named Avoma had been building a huge wooden wall, which everyone else on the island thought looked terrible. So while Avoma was offline, everyone spent an hour tearing it down. But then suddenly Avoma came back online and he wasn't happy. It didn't me, bro. That was so much progress, Qualls. Avoma, don't tell me you made the wall. I, I'm telling you that I made the wall. I built, I was gonna build a little sky limit, bro. Why? If you're an enemy player, right, and you come across this wall and you see like a wall up to the height limit, you're gonna be scared of that team's potential and it's all gone. This is tragic. Having gotten the message that his wall wasn't welcome in the middle of their civilization, Avoma retreated north, but he hadn't given up on building his wall. Instead, he felt the opposite. To get back at his teammate, he was going to build the greatest wall the world had ever seen. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm dedicating days to this wall, you have no idea. It's gonna be very big, very, very big. Meanwhile, on the far side of the world on St. Agnes, crime was everywhere. It was a land of no laws where criminals robbed innocent players unopposed. Some players had even started a sacrifice worshipping tribal cult. Marcus, That's if right. you give me a stack of enchanted golden apples, I will sacrifice a human every single day. Oh my god. The reason for why there was so much crime was actually kind of my fault. You see, I put the majority of the... <clears throat> alarming applicants on the same island because I thought it'd be funny to see how chaotic it would be. And it certainly was chaotic. St. Agnes soon became known across the world as the worst island to live on. One of the few sane players on the island, Dynamite, who had been unfortunate enough to end up on St. Agnes, had had enough of the chaos. So he decided to abandon the mainland altogether and founded his own nation on the small island to the east, which he called the Cottonmouth Coalition kind of split off from the rest of St. Agnes. Yeah. This island is the property of the Cottonmouth Coalition. Life on Cottonmouth was a lot safer than on the main island, due to Dynamite's no-tolerance policy when it came to crime. This led to players feeling safe enough to open the island's first businesses, notably a player named BMH built a Taco Bell. I've, I've just been putting bread and fish together and saying fish taco. <laughs> Over on Briar, the smallest of the five islands, a player named Mr. Mello had just been elected the new leader of the Briar Republic, and he has big plans. We're going to build a big city here on Briar, that's for sure. We're also going to be connecting Dresco and us with the big bridge as well. But, uh, Marcus, don't tell anyone this, but plan to assemble a secret network of spies, you know, just to keep an eye on all those treasonous people who didn't vote for me in the election. Over on Mello's neighboring island, Tresco, two players, Perspective and Murph, have come up with a unique way of enforcing law and order on their island. They've created an organization known as the Tresco Police Department. We want to help people, we want to build a Tresco Police Department. Perspective has even set up a police training course. Okay, we're gonna have a training course for the police officers and every single police officer is gonna have to go through it and I'm gonna time it and <laughs> judging by the time they get, they're gonna get a specific role. You have maximum one minute to complete the course. If you do not complete the course in one minute, you will fail and gain the lowest ranking. Understood? Yeah. yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go! Oh my god! Wait, he's a scout! He's, he's got like he's two Oh, miss! Miss, miss. jump! Oh. Go again! Okay. Oh, missed again! Come on, come on! Done! Come on. Yes. Okay, shooting range! Hit one! Hit two! Miss! No. Oh. Hurry! Hit! Okay, stop! 
Okay, stop. 34. Oh, that's 34. Not bad, not bad, not that's bad. not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. Lastly, over on St. Martin's, many small communities were starting to form. But the most notable one, led by a player named Multi, being a group focused on building a giant castle, which they called the Citadel. We're just, you know, making the cap making the capital, making the citadel look nice. Gonna take a lot of time, but we're working on it. It was in the half-built citadel later that day that all the communities planned to hold an election to choose the first official governor of all of St. Martin's. And Multi wanted to be that governor, but the problem for him was, was that there were other players who had more support than he did. So, to get the extra votes he needed to become leader, Multi ventured over to another large community on the far side of the island called Witheria, which is led by a very ambitious player named Tamer, who saw Multi's visit as a good opportunity to further his goals. And so Tamer agreed to make a deal with Multi. I can have as many of my people vote for you during the election tomorrow under one condition, who do not need to necessarily follow your rule, but we shall work together in a alliance in a bond between two grand nations on this island. One being led by me, and one being led by potentially you. So, do we have a well-structured deal? Agreement. Yes. Agreement. Good. Let us shake hands to celebrate this historical day. <laughs> yeah, The greatest party there was. The gods have spoken. The votes have been counted. And today, I am proud to announce our future leader, Governor Malti. Wow. What an introduction. What a speech. With Tamer's followers having voted for him, Multi was elected the first official governor of St. Martin. In return for the vote, Multi gave Tamer half of the St. Martin's land and legitimized Wadaria as his own sovereign nation. Unknown to everyone attending though, Tamer has much larger ambitions than controlling just half of St. Martin's. He dreams of one day uniting the entire island and the entire world under the rule of his Wadarian banner. We'll have to wait and see how his plan unfolds on day two. On the morning of day two, I went over to St. Mary to check in on the Voma's wall building progress. It needs to get bigger. It can only get bigger. It's my only motivation. I've been I've been working hard maintaining this and now I've got Far here up there. Oh, as you yeah. can see he's helping me. It's, it's a two-man army now, it's a, a Far's here as well. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Health and safety's not looking good. Aloma's wall isn't the only project seeing a lot of progress though. The rest of St. Mary's is thriving. Players have been busy building massive farms, businesses, houses, railways, castles, as well as their crowning achievement, the Star Castle which they hope will function as their public marketplace and council headquarters. The Star Castle is also the home of the brand new St. Mary's Trade Center, run by Damien, the distribution guild leader, who controls how all of the nation's resources are given out amongst the people. Here you go. Not everything is perfect though. Quals, the leader of the St. Mary's military, informed me that rumors of an underground rebellion movement were growing. Our rebels and traitors need to be hunted down as fast as possible. And it turns out that these rumors are true. A player named Danny Mugster and his followers have become disillusioned with the St. Mary's council, especially with Damien, the leader of the distribution guild. Danny claims that Damien is corrupt and that he is keeping materials that are supposed to go to the people all for himself. However, Damien had a different perspective. We can't always give the people what they want, sometimes because we don't have it, or sometimes because someone else needs it more. So we also have a lot of people that complain or get mad, but it's, uh, it's not an easy job. Now, it's not clear if Danny's claims about Damien's corruption are true or not, but one thing is certain, Danny is going to take action. Damien, the leader of the trade guild, was assassinated by Danny Mugster. A crowd of shocked St. Mary's players quickly gathered outside the distribution center and a grave was built to remember their fallen council member. Unfortunately for Danny, there were plenty of witnesses who saw the murder take place, and with Quoz's military conducting an island-wide manhunt, it wasn't long until he was captured. He was then escorted to the underground St. Mary's prison, where he was put on trial for his crimes. You have been charged with planning and murder of one of our great council members here on St. Mary's, Damien. I would like to plead 
guilty. I did it. To kill a leader of a, of a great council in the name of anarchy. Frankly, it, frankly, it's sickening. He was quickly found guilty of both treason and first degree murder by the panel of judges, resulting in a sentence of four days in prison, after which time he will be publicly executed for his crimes. Meanwhile, over on St. Agnes, things are really beginning to unfold. Under Dynamite's rule, the nation of Cottonmouth is thriving. Players have constructed snake statues, fountains, houses, and even a new fish and chip shop. Meanwhile, BMH's Taco Bell is seeing a record number of customers. All in all, because of Dynamite's no tolerance policy to crime, Cottonmouth is doing great. However, past the water checkpoint separating Cottonmouth from the main island, things aren't as good. Sacrificial cults and bandits still rule the land. In an attempt to establish order, a player named Kira has set up a governing council. However, unlike Dynamite, she believes that killing criminals on the spot is too harsh and is in the process of implementing a criminal justice system to give the criminals fair trials. Unfortunately, despite her good intentions, from what I can see, it appears as though her approach isn't really working, as crime is far higher on the mainland than it is on Dynamite's Cottonmouth. Everything is all about to change though, as the people of Snagness are about to hold an election. There are two main candidates, Kira and Dynamite, who isn't satisfied with bringing order to just his small bit of land. He wants to win the election to bring about justice to all of St. Agnes. Dynamite went first. Everyone of uh, St. Agnes, many of you know me. I'm Dynamite. I am the ruler, leader of Cottonmouth. I would just like to clarify, if you stole, killed, griefed, at all in the past two days, you will die. Make no mistake about it. This is not a democracy where thieves and griefers get to live. And I would just like to say that Cottonmouth will never, ever kill anyone who is not deserving of it. Thank you. And now it's Kira's turn, where she voiced her concerns about Dynamite, as well as her desire for a less harsh criminal justice system. I am Kira. Well, I know that we have a dictator. We have someone firstly for power. I know there's some, been some issue of briefing, but I'm sure people are going to sort that out by themselves. And I know that there's been talk of a kill list, so I'd like to make sure there's some sort of criminal system. Suddenly, there was chaos. Dynamite immediately sprung to action and ordered his guards to hunt down and kill the player responsible. Yes, he's dead, he's dead, we got him. Some players then alerted Dynamite that while he'd been away at the election, Cottonmouth had been robbed. It was so bad that someone had even stolen the furnaces from the Taco Bell. Nah, no, Cottonmouth has been robbed. They, 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 they even took the furnaces. Yeah, we just lost the leader. Taco Bell's been dynamite. They don't want to They even looted. They Everyone listen up! Everyone listen up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! All right. As we can tell, a lot of shit just went down. I don't think that elections are needed. A candidate has been killed. My my colony has been looted. I'm not gonna stand for this. Shit. Despite Dynamite saying an election wasn't necessary, they held a vote anyway. And unsurprisingly, all the fearful people of St. Agnes voted for Dynamite to stop the chaos. Let's go, Dynamite. Congratulations. <laughs> now that he was the uncontested leader of all of St. Agnes, Dynamite got to work. As my first decree, as king of St. Agnes, I want the griefers and thieves who have been making my life hell for the last two days killed on sight. Everyone. Glory to St. Agnes. Awesome. Oh, for the king! Oh, yeah. Come back, come back, come back, come back, he's here, he's back, he's back, he's back! Yeah, where? He's somewhere, huh? He's back here, he's back here. At the bottom, at the bottom, go, 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 go! Go, check. he's here! He's at the farm, 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 he's at I'm innocent. I'm innocent. For the past few days, you have been caught stealing from multiple people on this island. I might do anything. Anything you say, anything you say. You'll do anything? Anything? You said you'll do anything? Yes. Do one thing for me. Say hi to Kira for me. Oh, um, yeah. How cold was that? Uh, say hi to Kira for me. That was, that was cold. pretty damn cold. Good line. It was a good line, sir. It. Kira was dead, and Dynamite was now the sole uncontested ruler of all of St. Agnes. A 
the morning of day 3, I was incredibly surprised to see just how much progress all of the islands have made. Especially St. Martin's, which now looks incredible. Moti, the governor of St. Martin's, has completed his goal of building the citadel, and is in the process of building an entire city around it, as well as a huge harbour and ships equipped with sails in the design of their new nation's flag. Another nation that has made tons of progress is Melo's Republic of Briar, which has been busy building a giant city, surrounded by a tall defensive wall. In the centre of the city, Melo's people have constructed the Briar Supermarket, which they use in a similar manner to the distribution centre on St Mary's, where they categorise and give out all of the nation's resources. There's also a large council building, which is where Melo holds meetings with the rest of his government. There's also several new restaurants. There's a subway? This is amazing. I really like yeah, it. Thank you. Yeah, I got Sorry, cash. I got cash. Can I get a sub? Really? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. On the house. Thank you very much. And the people's favorite, the Rainforest Cafe. Hi, welcome to the Rainforest Cafe. What can we get for you today? Well, uh, what's the menu? Look up. Oh, oh, right. right, right. Baboon right. bread, mm -hmm. salmon mm -hmm. slider, mm -hmm. whale water. Whale water. Mm -hmm. Why is it free? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Anyway, moving on. Mello told me that things weren't as peaceful as they seemed. Yeah, so there is currently, I don't want to say like a civil war going on, but a very small percentage of people broke off and uh, kind of... Really? Like cult, I hadn't heard of this. To make Mello even more worried, the rebels were leaving threatening signs around the island. I mean, Or Kingsley Island shall fall. Bro, who's putting these down? Yeah, I don't know. That was just creepy. Then later that day, Mello informed me that he had uncovered a plot to assassinate him. Here, follow me for a second. We were about to start a council meeting, right? To discuss some, some future plans. Yeah. And some dude runs into the room. He says, wait, Mello, don't sit down. I go, what? He breaks my seat. And there's like a, a hundred black no. drop with fence, like signs and stuff. Luckily for Mello, there was a witness who saw the player that made the fall trap. So the would-be assassin was quickly identified as a player called Unreal Zeus, the owner of the local church. Having been caught, Unreal Zeus was quickly hunted down and executed by Mello's elite guards. But two questions remain for Mello though. Why would Zeus do such a thing? And did he act alone? Now, what I'm about to show you is the core trial of a player named Moosey, who is the co-founder of Zeus's church. And it is due to these close ties with Zeus that Melo's council suspects he was in on the assassination plot. Moosey, Hello. you stand with several accusations against you. Yesterday, there was an attempt on Melo's life. Reason to believe that you, Moosey, may possibly be involved in it. Do you have any affiliations with a man called Unreal Zeus? I do. He's my partner. That's quite suspicious. Let's start with Moosey. Please make your defense case. I would never think my partner, who I started a great church with, a great temple, would try and assassinate our great leader. I, it just doesn't make sense. He had a bit of bitterness after we got the visit from Mello and his... his, uh... But because it was getting quite heated, Henry West, the moderator of the trial, called for a vote. If you think that Moosey is innocent, go towards the chair. If you think he is guilty, go towards the door. Moosey is deemed innocent by overwhelming vote. Let's continue with our daily activities. Moosey was found not guilty of conspiring to kill Mello and was allowed to walk away as a free man. To all who saw the trial, it seemed to be a fair result. However, what if I were to tell you that Moosey was in fact guilty and that he had not only helped Zeus plan the trap, but is also an active member of a wider rebellion against Mello's government? Moosey. Hello. They yeah. found you innocent. <laughs> yeah. But you were, no? You actually actively took part in that assassination attempt and you actually yeah. just got away with it. As a man of peace and tranquility, people just fall for it like that. This, this nation is far from perfect, is riddled with hierarchy and inequality. Trust me, a revolution is brewing and they don't know it. Only, only the smart ones are aware of what's going on. For doing such a great job moderating Moosey's trial, Mello appointed Henry West as the judicial leader of Briar, giving him great power in the government, but it turns out that Henry West is actually the leader of the Briar Rebellion and during the trial had been pulling the strings to make sure that his ally Moosey was found innocent. There are so many layers to this rebellion, I can completely understand why Mello is so paranoid. 
while Mello is dealing with his rebellion on Briar. Over on his neighboring island, Tresco, Perspective, the founder of the Tresco Police Department, has been doing a lot in his pursuit of law and order. Earlier in the day, he held a police academy graduation ceremony for the officers that completed the police training course on day one, where he assigned them a rank in the department. Due to the, your outstanding performance during our training course, you will be assigned a role of police officer and achieve the greater good for the people of the Southern Tresco. Yes, sir. And presented them with turtle shells to act as their official police badges. This is your badge. Bad. Wear it yeah. with honor, my friend. Unfortunately, some of the police officers were a little too enthusiastic when it came to stopping crime. Do you know why I pulled you over? Because I was bored. Yo, hey, hey, yo, yo, he got a weapon! He got a weapon! Yo. Hey, stop resisting! Stop resisting! What are you doing? <laughs> Trouble with Perspective's police department wasn't limited to just the occasional excessive use of force, though. There were reports that some officers were abusing their newly found power to threaten local communities in order to rob them of food and materials for their own personal gain. Because of some of these incidents, public opinion on Tresco was quickly turning against the police department. It seems there is a bit of discontent towards the police. Do you guys yeah. share the view? police coming straight from the underground <laughs> <laughs> now support for the police department is about to be put to the test as the people of tresco are about to hold an election and perspective who wants to get his police officially elected into power intends to campaign and luckily for perspective he doesn't really have any competition <laughs> firstly there's this guy how does building houses make us win this game think about it. think about the houses if we have houses we have shelter if we have shelter they can't kill us if they can't kill us we can't die if we we can't die, we win, because we won't lose. Can you all stop booing? And then there's this guy who generated this speech using ChatGPT. Uh, the power of hope. In the face of adversity, we must remain resilient, optimistic, and determined. Much of your speech was made by ChatGPT. All of it. Ah, what a society to come to. And now it's Perspective's turn. All of these candidates, they've came up today on the stand. They gave you all these promises and all these things they believe they want to do. They believe they want to achieve. But if we look at them, and if we look at people standing here, have they yet to achieve anything? We want to represent the people who will be there to die for you, for your beliefs, for your builds, for everything that you want to make, we will die for you, we will fight for you. There is one player who might potentially challenge perspective though. My name is Diamond, and the last few days I've been going around the islands, helping each individual community to farm, mine, build and gather resources. Unlike my opposition, the PD, who have been running around terrorising local communities, intimidating locals like Tidestorm, and stealing resources from local villages. On the first day, the first thing they do is establish a military. Why do they do this? Clearly, there are some unknown motives that they have. We cannot trust them. They are dangerous and we must do something to stop them. If I'm elected as leader, I'll do all I can to abolish the PD and keep this nation safe. Vote for me if you want Tresco to finally be united and come out victorious. Thank you. And so, with the speeches given, the people all marched together across the island towards the Northern Castle, where they held a vote. And very narrowly, Diamond won the election. Well, thank you so, so much for all you guys. I really appreciate everything. I will do my best to become the best leader possible. Perspective is outraged. He feels that Diamond slandered his police department during a speech. And so Perspective gathered together some of his most trusted officers to conspire against their new leader. You know what? You know what really, really messes with me though? The fact that the guy who is right now leader in his speech openly said, I think the PD is terrifying and I'm going to deal with it. He views you guys as a threat. We are, are going to be either evicted or killed. And I'm scared of that. We are not separating from Tresco. We're separating from Diamond. Well said. Everyone, let's go to Diamond and declare <laughs> intentions. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. You called the PD scary. You called the PD terrifying. You called us a threat. You promised to deal with us. Several people have heard you say you want to seize power by any means necessary. And then the first thing we see you guys do is establish a giant army. I mean, <laughs> it does look a bit suspicious, you gotta admit. Uh, All okay. I want is to unite Tresco. And yet, and you do the I'm exact opposite. opposite. Suddenly, someone cried out that there was a fall trap beneath Diamond, and the confrontation broke down into chaos. Look at that. Eventually, some of Diamond's followers proposed that they should split Tresco in two. Are we splitting Tresco up? in two? Are we not breaking up? No. Uh, of course no, we are. We're the PD. No, it sounds like we are. Yeah, it, it sounds, sounds like, like we are breaking up because we're not allowing you guys to just take power forcefully. 
Okay. And so, Tresco is now split into two nations. The South, which is controlled by Prospector's Police Department, and the North, which is controlled by Diamond. To symbolize the divide, a crude stone wall is being constructed between the two sides, and a fragile truce has been put in place in hopes of preventing a civil war. It is now the end of day three, and internal conflicts have descended upon most of the world. Whether that's Henry's rebellion against Mello on Briar, dynamite crushing crime on St. Agnes, or Perspective's police force dividing Tresco, some players are beginning to believe that the fact that there are so many conflicts occurring at the same time is almost too much of a coincidence. Well, it turns out that it's no coincidence at all. It felt like everyone was targeting us, and we still almost won. And I want to know, what is up with you? You didn't just split up because the, because multi won, right? No, 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 no. I think you misunderstand. The only reason multi won was because 20 of my people voted for him. I gave him the position, and he shall keep the position till the time is ready. Perspective, I have not told you exactly what the initial idea was of this imperial idea. Remember Tamer? the leader of the community called Witheria over on St. Martins. Well, he has a lot more ambition than anyone previously realized. Tamer believes that the only way to eliminate crime, put a stop to war, and ensure the potential of a great civilization is met, is to have all of the civilizations unite under the control of one strong and unchallenged leader. So behind the scenes, he's been carefully coordinating with Henry over on Briar, Perspective over on Tresco, and Dynamite over on St. Agnes, to help them take control control of their islands in order to realize his dream of what he calls the Witherian Empire, a multi-island empire that would rule over 80% of the entire global population. That's 800 people. But how will this Witherian Empire actually work? Well, Tamer plans to appoint a supervisor to govern over each individual island in his name, whilst he as the emperor will oversee them all. Okay. Every single island, Tresco, St. Agnes, Martins till now and potentially Briar will be under one common banner of the Empire. Every single okay. island will have something like a supervisor, a leader taking care of the land, the geographical land of their people, right? So you would be taking care of Tresco, Dynamite would be taking care of Agnes, and Multi, the person I have in charge in uh, Martins right now, would be taking care of Martins itself. Okay. Now, Briar is going to be the next thing we need to focus on, which is with Marusi and Henry and Mello. When we have that fixed, and we have the Imperial outpost there as well, we look at Maris. Marys the last hideout of potential rebels. But why would these leaders want to join the Witherian Empire in the first place? What's in it for them? Well, the answer is security. Tamma promises them that if they face a rebellion, he will combine the armies of all the other islands and go over to the rebelling island to restore order, thus keeping the supervisor in power permanently. All right, I can definitely agree to this alliance, this partnership. Just bottom line is, I will control my island. Hundred percent. Exactly. Emperor. Don't like yes. the emperor part. What does the emperor part mean? We need one head of the state. One Absolutely emperor not. That's not happening ever. Imagine this, and I said this before. Imagine this. You manage to get control. You manage to take control. Tresco is fine. What happens when Dynamite and I just come together and say? F Perspective could be a problem. Let's really? talk with Brian and Marys and get him out. No, we came to you. All right. Yeah, I agree. I'll let I'll let the police officers know and uh, we'll try to do our best. So, we need to proceed carefully. With with all our troops combined, we could be the largest force. We could really do something great. For now, the Witheran Empire is small. Dynamite is the only supervisor who actually rules his island. Perspective and Henry will need to work closely with Tamer to seize control of their islands, so that in the coming days, the full potential of the Witheran Empire can be realized. On the morning of day 4, I went over to St. Mary's to see how things were going, and I was very surprised to see a massive dirt pyramid. Paul's informed me that it was a place of worship for their new religion, which centered around praising some kind of magic slug. Now, this all confused me quite a lot, so to explain the religion more clearly, they introduced me to their head priest, Old Man Isaac. Hey! Did I ever tell you about the war? No, you didn't. 
Well, it was back in World War One, down in the trenches. I'd just been shot in my in my in my right foot. I thought, oh, I'm done for. This is it. And then out of nowhere, from the sky, the the big slug came down. It was truly magnificent. It even healed my foot. I, I worship the slug with all with all my heart. What's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> Next, I stopped by the brand new St. Mary's Explorers Guild headquarters, where the leader of the Explorers Guild, Aegis, kindly took me on a tour. There's a large storage room, a bar, and even a grand meeting room fit with a map. But there was one room in particular that really caught my attention. My personal the favorite, we therapy got a uh, yeah. therapy room. So do you guys keep your own prisoners in here? We don't like to call them prisoners. Oh, this is lions, Marcus. We're calling like lions. So Look how happy they are. I'm guy. getting better, Marcus. Uh, what, a, what, what therapy uh, method is having the skull in the cell with them? I mean, uh, therapy room. It's, it's, it's a previous client. Oh. It was after the tour, I found out that Danny Mugster, the rebel leader who is still in prison following his assassination of Damien on day one, has a new neighbor named Stomp, who doesn't seem to be coping very well in his small cell. Some of this shit he's writing on the walls. <laughs> now, Stomp, like Danny, was formerly part of the rebellion against the St. Mary's Council, and is in prison because he was responsible for the death of Aegis' second in command, a player named Lotharia, who he apparently pushed off a ledge. Oh. He murdered one of our people in cold blood. However, unlike Danny, Stomp genuinely regrets his actions. I am a reformed man, contemplated. I have reformed myself. I'm no longer the same person I was before, and I would like to help the state in any way that I can. It is because of this that Quo spared Stomp the death penalty and is taking a personal interest in ensuring Stomp will be rehabilitated and safely reintegrated back into society once his short one day prison sentence ends. And Stomp's rehabilitation seems to be going great, which is why it was a total shock to Quo's when this happened. Stomp just escaped prison while two guards were on duty. The island is now on high alert. Aegis and the rest of St. Mary's are freaked out that a convicted murderer is on the run. He's prison. escaped due to the incompetence of the military guards. I'm fuming, honestly. The Quals, on the other hand, is incredibly confused as to why Stomp would want to escape in the first place. It simply didn't make any sense. He only had one day left in prison. We only gave him one more day in jail, so for him to go out and escape for malicious intent makes absolutely no sense. Sense. There must be an explanation for why he escaped, and it turns out there is. Well, you see, I was going to le like stay out my sentence because I only had one more day, but then they started mistreating me in the prison and torturing me. I see. So I had to, I had to get, I had to get out. Apparently, Stomp only broke out of prison because the guards that were on duty were mistreating him. I just spoke with Stomp, and Stomp has said to me that the guard that was on duty with me was very egotistical, so I had to put him in their place a bit. Especially <laughs> despite Stomp's escape being quite funny. Quals was outraged that guards under his authority had been allowed to mistreat a prisoner like that. I don't blame him for breaking out. Like, that's ridiculous. And so he fired the guards responsible on the spot. I'm gonna take the two guards that were on duty and you're both not allowed on duty again. Hearing that the guards who had mistreated him had been fired, Stomp willingly turned himself in. Follow me, Stomp. And was escorted back to the prison, where Quals offered him the choice to pick whichever cell he wanted to stay out the remaining day of his sentence. Yeah, I like this cell. Meanwhile, over on a still very divided Tresco, they are having prisoner problems of their own. A player named Fazcap, who's from Diamond's North Tresco, has been locked up in the Tresco Police Force's underground bunker. The reason for this imprisonment is that he dug underneath the dividing stone wall and robbed the police department's secret vault. However, a Tresco police officer caught Fazcap in the act. Perspective, hearing that his vault had been robbed. We got robbed apparently. Our vault robbed. had heisted it. And that the truce between the North and South had been broken by one of Diamond's citizens. Much over to Diamond's castle and demanded that Fazcap be handed over immediately. We are 100% sure that your person was digging under our land, digging right where the, our valuables are located. I you sincerely apologize. Apologize? No, apologize. no I, I, I understand. That's, I don't understand. Know, that's not enough. We are the police. You know what we do with criminals, right? And Diamond, wanting to avoid a civil war, gave Fazcap to Perspective's police force on the condition that they only hold him in jail for one day. We need two guards. Make sure 
Oh, got Fontaine him. Fontaine doesn't get out. Which brings us to right now. Perspective himself is guarding Fazka in the underground bunker to ensure that he doesn't try to escape. Yeah. Yeah, every now and then I have to remind everyone. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. One of Diamond Citizens infiltrated the police force's bunker in an attempt to assassinate Perspective and free Fazka. Perspective, angered by the attempt on his life, wants revenge, and so he ordered the execution of Fazka. Uh, <laughs> let me do it! Let me do it, please! Okay. <laughs> With Fazcat dead, the guards made a shocking discovery. Twelve okay. blocks of diamonds! Twelve blocks of diamonds! Wait, wait, what whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude. It turns out that there are twelve blocks of diamonds on Fazcat's body, which means he not only stole from Perspective's South Tresco vault, but also from Diamond's North Tresco. Because of this revelation, Fetch, the executioner, went round all of Tresco, giving the diamonds back to the people. Yo, who was Diamond Armor, baby? Yeah, you get a full set. You get a full set. This act really did a lot to bring both sides together. You just have a collective party, both sides or something. <laughs> both North and South re-established communication, continued working together on the Tresco Briar Bridge, and open trade between both sides resumed. Relations improved so much that both nations agreed to hold a peace summit later that day. Suddenly, hopes are now very high that the wall dividing the fractured island will be torn down. Now, the only thing in the way of total reunification is perspective and diamond of officially agreeing on it. So, with the population of Tresco eagerly gathered round, the peace summit began. It, it was actually me who called for this meeting, Nimbus, hi. We could have made so much progress now, but we can't because we're not working together. I feel as though if we absolve PD, if we absolve North, South, neutrals, every group, and just become one Tresco, we can actually work together. Anyone in the crowd? Are you aware of what I'm holding in my hand right now? Do you guys know what this item is and what it represents? This item is a police department badge of the Tresco Islands. A police department that me and my good old friend over here Murph have created. And abolishing us is completely removing all of our history that we have created throughout the server. You're just telling us to give up our badges, all of our ranks, everything with me and my- and my- I call them friends! Me and my friends went through just because of what? Because of this unbelievable idea you have that everyone is gonna unify? What do the people want? They're screaming peace. They want unity. You're the only person to Declining us. Why do you want to continue chaos? Why don't you give us a solution? What can we do to make you trust us? All you do is say words. I've yet to see one action. This is the action. Us being I have given you an action. I made peace with three damn islands. Three so islands. I made peace. You made peace with three islands, islands but you haven't made peace with us. Time. No, I can't talk with them. Thank you for unity. Can you not hear them? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, money, 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 get him, get him, get him, get him. Dead, he's dead, he's dead. Do you see? I jumped to action right there. Is that not trust? No, that's not trust! Your guy just jumped me! Alright, PD retreat! Perspective was absolutely outraged that not only one, but two North Tresco players under Diamond had been allowed to enact assassination attempts on him. It was at that moment that he snapped. Perspective ordered his most trusted officers to gather in the police department's secret bunker for a meeting, where he explained to them his plan for a hostile takeover of Tresco. If any of you do support the idea of unity and peace, I would recommend you drop your badge on the table right now and leave the room. So you're all with me, right? We are with you. Oh, right? yeah. During this meeting, Perspective reached out to Tamer on Sir Martin to make him aware of what he was about to do. And Tamer was incredibly pleased with the news, since it would mean the expansion of his Witherian Empire. And so he strongly urged Perspective to carry out the takeover. Emboldened by the support of Tamer, Perspective ordered his officers to march north towards Diamond's castle. Three, two, one, go! We talk to Diamond first. We tell him the ultimatum. We are here to talk. One more arrow, we attack. If you guys enter the castle, we won't hesitate to go. Diamond, you can't control the people. Did you not see how I immediately went to kill them? No, Diamond. I'm asking you. You guys either leave to the spawn island, and if you show your face at Tresco Island again, you'll get killed. Or you right here, right now, fight if you don't agree. That is your only option. Okay, boys. Arrow shots, go. Arrow shot, arrow shot, arrow shot, we go. Oh my god. Arrow shot. Nope. 
go. Let's go. Go up, go up, go up. Go Guys, bridge up, bridge up. Do not walk up. Do not walk up any ladders. You could settle this piece to this back, but you choose not to. Nope, you could. And your person no. shot me. Oh, Just like God. I said, uncontrollable. Go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. Everyone yeah, to the top of the tower, top of the tower, top, top, top. People at the PT, you can leave this, you can leave this battle peacefully. Leave your tyrannical leader. The the tyrannical the leader. Tower. They're trying to get through the walls of the tower. PT, uh, if you fight with us, you, we will offer you safety in the future. We will offer you protection. Part protection from right what? Right you have yet to make any alliance with anyone. Only you. Only Briar. I, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Okay. Those of PT who don't want to fight, just put your weapons down. We won't hurt We already you. talked about this, buddy. We won't I'm sorry. Say Smith, say Smith, I'm chasing him. Everyone on the top of the tower right now! PD, every single person on the top! Yo, Diamond! Diamond! He's here! He's here! He's here! He's here! Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah! Yes! Up, oh. boys! Up the tower! Everyone up the tower right now! Diamond, the elected leader of Tresco, is dead. Those that did not surrender to the police department were executed on the spot. And those that did surrender... You can surrender, Abiko! Guys, don't kill Abiko! Abiko, do you surrender? Yes or no? were stripped of their armor and escorted under armed guard to the police department's prison to be jailed as prisoners of war. Perspective now has total control over all of Tresco. We did it, boys! The wall was taken down, but not for the reason that everyone had hoped. It's now day five of the event, and it's about time we checked in on Dynamite, the king of St. Agnes. And it turns out he's made a lot of changes. Firstly, I notice he's building a brand new Blackstone courthouse. You're building a court? Now that is a big yeah. step up from the chaos yesterday. It looks like you're actually doing law and order. Um, no, this is mainly just that we don't have to do all the executions in front of the throne. Oh, <laughs> wait, so you're making the executions more efficient? This is essentially just a really nice execution room. Oh. Uh, Once the more efficient execution building was finished, there was actually a legitimate court case in it. The owner of the Taco Bell, BMH, is getting sued by the owner of the local McDonald's, who alleges that BMH completely destroyed his restaurant over fear of competition. For the record, Chaos C09 is suing BMH for, for destruction of property. To bring about justice for this crime, the prosecution demands that the Taco Bell must be shut down. However, despite overwhelming evidence that he did indeed destroy the McDonald's. The jury, who are all very fond of BMH's tacos, declared him innocent. Taco Bell stays open. Chaos, you have lost the case. Does that mean I execute e Chaos? Okay. No! Whoa, 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 whoa. Dynamite has also implemented a tax system, where he travels around his island with his executioner demanding taxes from his citizens. Today is a good day for profit. <laughs> are we taxing people we already tax? Sure. Okay. Well. <laughs> okay. It's, it's time for tax season, my friend. It's a tax. mandation from your king. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. A little bit more than that. That was only one. Come on. Two. You can get at least two in there. There we go. I'm expecting more next time, Swat. In my opinion, it looks more like state-sponsored mugging than taxing. The taxes wait for no man. Players aren't the only ones getting taxed, though. He also taxes all the local businesses. Let's go, uh, let's go tax the Taco Bell. I refuse to pay taxes, sorry. Oh, you refuse to pay taxes, huh? Yeah, Did you forget the that the executioner is also the tax collector? I will pay taxes, never mind. I'm paying taxes. One admirable thing he's done is that he's built a very nice graveyard to remember Kira, his opponent who was tragically assassinated in the St. Agnes election. That isn't the only renovation he's made, though. He also tore down the border checkpoint that separated Cottonmouth from the main island to symbolize the entire island finally unifying under his control. It seems as though he may be going a little too far with his quest to rid St. Agnes of crime though. A player named Tost has been overheard talking negatively about Supreme Leader Dynamite, and in Dynamite's eyes, anyone criticizing him is therefore a criminal and has to be dealt with. So in response, he ordered his elite guards to hunt down Tost and forcefully bring him to the courthouse. He was last seen at the railway system. All right, then we yeah. go to the railway system, right? Yo, I see him, I see him right there. To court you shall go. All right, so Tost. My, my, my buddy, my friend. Bro, I wanted to help you. You've been found guilty of uh, assaulting the high crown. Yeah, Not only that, you've been found guilty of treason. I have uh, I have uncovered secret messages that you've been uh, that you've been exchanging, saying that you uh, overthrow me. You think I'm a dictator, to us? You think I'm a dictator? You think I'm a dictator? It hurts my soul to do this. It really does. But due to this undeniable evidence, I think we all know it needs to be done. 
It's clear Dynamite's once positive intentions of bringing justice to St. Agnes have been twisted into something darker. He seems to believe that he is the only way to bring about order. Thus, anyone who goes against them is an enemy of the island that must be purged. Even some of his own guards are starting to grow fearful of him. He thought I was a dictator. You all don't think I'm a dictator, do you? I don't know. No, no, I don't think so. I would like, love to thank everyone for showing up for this execution. Taxes, taxes, taxes. Taxes, taxes. taxes. Meanwhile, a lot is going on on St. Mary's. A player named Lowlime has finished building his very own theme park, which is called Limeland. However, while Lowlime wasn't watching, someone played a joke on him. Avoma has been hard at work constructing his wall ever since I last spoke to him, and it's beginning to look absolutely colossal. It now stretches across the entire island. Day 5 is also the day that Stomp, the rehabilitated prisoner, is being released. And the first thing he did is join Quarles' military to serve under the player who spared him the death penalty. Things aren't as upbeat for Danny though, the player who assassinated Damien, the council member on day 2, as today is the day he is scheduled to be executed for his crimes. Danny, before, before we go, you of course uh, requested a certain item as your last meal. Yes, yeah, thank you. This feels nice. No problem. Danny? Yes. Are you ready to be transported? I am. Guards, quit us. Danny, stay close. Oh, yeah. Danny, are you ready to make the walk? I am. Follow me. Danny, stand right here. Everyone find a seat around the area, please. Just precaution, Danny, don't worry. Okay. Everyone, you join us here today as we witness the first execution of St. Mary's. We do not execute people lightly here. We are a just civilization. We believe in law and honor amongst all. But when someone betrays our civilization in the way that Danny has today, by murdering such a valiant and honorable leader as Damien was, punishment must also be justice. Danny has been sentenced to death under murder of our great leader, Damien. And for that reason, he will die on this day. Danny, you may have one minute to speak. I will take my mask off now so that you all will be able to see my face. Hello citizens, friends, fellows, and enemies. Many of you have come today to see me executed for the death of Damien. I have no remorse for my actions. The death of a leader hoarding resources while others die is a good cause. I tell you masses, rise up. Let my death be a symbol. Let my legacy continue in this life, and I will see you in the next. What Danny claims and speaks is an understatement of the truth. Danny had full intent on killing Damien and only Damien. That is why Danny sits here today on the execution block. My child, you've done wrong in this world. You've killed. You need to repent what you have done with your life. Death to the slug. Thank you all for attending this execution, and just so you all know, this was just an honourable act today. Go back to what is important, build this island up to be something brilliant that we are all proud of. Glory to St. Mary's! On the morning of
beginning of day 6, Perspective, who after the death of Diamond now controls all of Tresco, took me on a tour of what his police force have been constructing. Look, tell me this is not fire, look, follow me. We made this big road that yeah. goes through every single, like, almost every build on the island. The road is fire, it's insane. I mean, haven't then, you just uh, built a more convenient way for the enemies to invade your island? Well, we're gonna make a big wall, it's gonna be fine, don't okay. worry about it. There was one new build in particular that he was especially happy to show me. And also, Marcus, look at that beauty. Do you see it in the distance? <laughs> that is a hell of a donut. <laughs> that big donut is real, Marcus K. <laughs> it's real. He <laughs> actually a made a donut. donut. The police can finally <laughs> die a happy death now that the big donut is complete. <laughs> Do you look at it. Them? Look at these people them? praying. Look. Well, Marcus, have <laughs> you seen the new donuts? Look oh, at them right. praying. The road it goes all the way around, and it's like a it's like a full circle. So pretty much, you can go all around. This is circle like a donut like oh my god like a donut and there's this thing in the middle <laughs> he also showed me some improvements he's been making to diamond's old castle yeah, yeah we made the walls made it look all pretty a little entrance over here yeah and then and then if you come over what the f is that well it looks like one of diamond's loyalists built a huge wall to spy perspective Now, we haven't visited St. Martyrs in a while. The reason for that is that it's been incredibly peaceful. Both Maltese people to the west and Tamer's Vatherians to the east are thriving. Tamer has made a lot of progress building his Vatherian capital, whilst Maltese people have been working hard on a huge trench that cuts through the ocean to a nearby island. All in all, things seem to be going well. However, under the surface, there is a lot more going on. Tamer has never lost sight of his grand vision for a worldwide empire. Now that both of his Witherian supervisors, Dynamite and Perspective, have complete control of their islands, the Witherian Empire now rules over exactly half of the world, making Tamer the single most powerful player in the server. He doesn't plan to stop there though. His gaze now rests upon the western half of St. Martins, which is currently ruled by Multi, the player that Tamer made the deal with on day one. But Tamer is a practical guy. He doesn't want war, as that would mean wasting value with their own lives. Instead, he plans to try a more diplomatic approach. So, later that day, he invited Multi to a secret meeting over at Witheria. Alright, Multi, do you want to take a seat? Where he offered Multi the position of Witherian supervisor of St. Martins, in return for absorbing Multi's territory into his empire. Multi has no intention of accepting Tamer's offer though. He wants to keep his people free from Tamer's rule, and to maintain his position as the governor of St. Martins. And so, Multi and his council have decided to take action. They're going to to pretend to accept the offer, but are secretly planning to assassinate Tamer as soon as they get the chance. And the whole thing we want to do is to not tip him off that we're going to kill him. We can't be under his rule. We have built up our own spot too much. We've worked too hard on our own islands. For now though, Multi has a different problem to worry about. His builders, led by head builder Treebark, are on strike because apparently, according to Treebark, higher ups in Multi's government have been overworking and threatening her builders. So they are holding a protest inside the Citadel. This is incredible bad timing for Multi, as the builders make up a big portion of his army that he will desperately need if he's going to assassinate Tamer tomorrow. Unless it gets resolved somehow before the end of the day, there's a big chance that, yeah, something will probably go wrong for tomorrow. So, in hopes of calming down the protesters, Multi left his underground bunker and began rowing his way over to the Citadel. What are you gonna do because of the miscommunication that you have done? Like I said, I have been doing stuff, leader stuff, talking to other members, trying to, trying to see if for a line so yes, I have not been there today. What about your nation? The ones that need your help the most, where have you been? Okay, so have I not been helping around talking to everyone for, for the last three days? You have been, but you haven't been focusing on the nation that needs you. You've been focusing making sure war doesn't break out. War is going to happen, no matter what happens. Okay, so tell you, you, you're telling me that focusing on not getting war is not doing something good for the nation? That's what you're telling me right now? There's no communication, there's no nothing. People have been threatened with death. All you've said is, oh yeah, they'll say sorry and we've done, we've resigned one person. That is not enough. What are your, what are your questions? What, what do you want then? What do you want? You to step down. The whole thing is a trap. Tamer's spies had informed him of Multi's plot to assassinate him, so he'd gotten in contact with Treebug and convinced her to hold the protest against Multi in order to simultaneously turn the people against Multi and lure him to his death. Multi, are you not going to step forward and speak to your people? I have openly had people tell me that you want to kill me. Why would I come to you guys and let you guys kill me? Why do the people want your head? You've openly plotted on going against me. 
Even though okay, I gamer, gamer. We're, 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 gonna, we're gonna talk about this for now? Okay, fine, let's talk about this. You basically told us, join or die. I never said that, that is a lie. But earlier today, you said, you said everyone who would not become part of, of the Empire is, is classed as, as a rebellion and will be dealt with. So if we don't join you, what, what are we then? A rebellion, so we die. I've given you the chance to join, that was it. How can we expect from someone who's too afraid to stand in front of their own people? How can we expect you to lead us through war with other nations? We can't. True. We really can't. See? Fun. You're kidding me right now. You're yeah, kidding me right fine. now. He's all playing you guys. He's all playing you. Could all the people of Martians come to the Citadel? All the non-cowards. First of all, addressing the miners and the builders who have been mistreated till now. We will not give them any death threats. We will not overwork them. They shall be free to build what is good for the common people. I will also be paying a few of the builders for all the hard work they've put in. I, as the leader of Martins, will take over to create this order, this new empire, which will lead under order and security for all. Thank you. Tamer now has total control over all of St. Martins. This means that Tamer's Valerian Empire now reigns over exactly 60% of the entire world's population. It's now day 7, and both Qualls, the leader of the Sumeri's military, and Mello, the leader of Briar, are starting to get worried. Having learnt about the existence of the Witherian Empire, they are understandably concerned that Tamer might try to seize control of their islands next. So, fearing that they might lose the civilizations that they've worked so hard to create, Qualls reached out to Mello, and together they formed a military coalition in hopes of opposing Tamer's empire. And they were right to be alarmed. Because it was there, on St. Agnes on Day 7, that Tamer, Dynamite and Henry rallied their combined Imperial forces, readying them to attack Mello's Republic of Briar. We need to do this now and we need to do it quickly. All of you not interested, this is your chance. Put down your armour, put down your swords, and take out the bloody hoe and go farming. Otherwise, gentlemen, I will ask of you one question. Gentlemen, what makes the grass grow? <laughs> That's what I hope to hear. Go forward, invade, and take out the traitors. Now, you might have noticed that Perspective isn't at the rally. The reason for this is that Tamer has given Perspective a special task to complete. Tamer wants Perspective to lure Mello over to Tresco to assassinate him so that when Tamer's forces invade Briar, the people of Briar will be lost and confused without their leader, allowing Tamer to conquer the island with ease. And so, Perspective put Tamer's plan into action. Perspective reached out to Mello regarding a grand bridge opening between their two islands. We're gonna open the bridge, it's gonna be fire and awesome. And Mello seemed very enthusiastic to take part. So, later that day, Perspective gathered together a delegation of his highest ranking officials and set out on this mission to assassinate Mello. However, when he got there, he was met by something unexpected. Mello was nowhere to be seen, and instead, Briar's military and deputy leader Trinfinity were in his place. And strangely, Trinfinity was acting very cautiously. High perspective. Yo, can we like sit down somewhere? This is pretty uncivilized. I'm sorry, but this is necessary for our safety. We are not going on to Trusco. But no, no, me and Mello, we just had a plan that we, that we, we built a massive bridge and stuff, and we wanted to like have a meeting at the bridge, and we were like a bridge opening ceremony, but we, we didn't mean any off. harm. We were tipped off about a certain plan that was going to hatch. Oh, once uh, we crossed with us? Over. Yes. <laughs> what? Somehow Trinfinity knows that we're there in Empire's plan to kill Mello. Sorry that it had to be this way. Certainly, some of Perspective's officers alerted him that Tresco is under attack. Some Marys and Briar are invading Tresco. But hold on a minute. How do they know about Tamer's plan to assassinate Mello? Well, the answer is absolutely shocking. Tamer never forgot about when Perspective questioned his position as Emperor. Emperor? Don't like yes. the Emperor part. What does the Emperor part mean? We need one head of the state. One Absolutely not. That sh is not happening. Ever. And so, now believing that Perspective isn't a trustworthy ally, in the biggest betrayal I've ever seen, Tamer anonymously leaked the assassination plan to Mello, knowing that Mello would call on Quarles to help him kill Perspective, thus pitting all three of his enemies against each other. So, if Tamer never intended to help Perspective take over Briar, then where is the Witheran army?
Sorry, boys. Off we go. Good luck, no. everybody. Knowing that Quarles would send his best troops to Briar to help Mello, Tamer knew St. Mary's would be largely undefended and thus launched an all out invasion of the island. Slaughter them. Do as you see fit. Show them no mercy. They certainly won't show you any. And now, the great with their in war begins. Red death on the They kind of push us back to the wall. They're falling back, they're falling back. They're scared, they're scared. Now! Burn it down the whole city child. Burn it down and everything inside. Sweet revenge through your song and go through. Up high, they're on the rooftops. I'm with you. I'm with you. Get him up on my city smoke stretch to the sky. Burn it down the whole city child. Come on, you buggers! Let's have at you! Come on, you buggers! You and me! Come on! Come on! Henry West, the leader of the Briar Rebellion, is dead, and all the players that were loyal to him are fleeing the battle. Dynamite, seeing that the Empire is losing numbers, got in his boat and retreated back to St. Agnes. Betrayed and vastly outnumbered, Perspective, the leader of Tresco, fell in battle, and the rest of his police force were completely wiped out. And just like that, the battle is over. Quarles and Mello's coalition had repelled the Witheran army, but not without heavy costs. Hundreds of players on both sides fell in battle, leaving only around 150 people alive throughout the entire world. That means around two-thirds of everyone who fought in the battle died. Among the high number of casualties was Trinfinity, Mello's deputy, who died defending his island, and considering he was so well liked in the community, it was a heavy loss for the people of Briar. St. Mary suffered greatly too, losing their religious leader, Old Man Isaac. Also amongst the dead was BMH, the owner of the St. Agnes Taco Bell. Another casualty during the battle was the St. Mary's Distribution Center. The main storage area of the nation's resources had nearly been completely destroyed by Imperial players, leaving the surviving Coalition players short on food and without the means to replenish their armor. There was some real courage on display during the battle though. Stomp, the reformed ex-prisoner, defended St. Mary's side by side with his old warden Quals, and in an act of pure bravery, Stomp led enemy players away from Quals to give his former warden enough time to get away. Don't, don't help me, don't help me, don't help me, I'm luring them away. In the process, sacrificing himself. It's been fun, boys. Good try, good try, Stomp. I think it's really cool that Quell spared Stomp's life during his trial, instead believing he could be rehabilitated, and in return, Stomp gave his life to save the person that saved him. With both Perspective and Henry dead, Tamer's Witherian chain of command has all but collapsed, meaning his dreams of an empire are at an end. It was on the somber morning of day 8, while the remaining players were still recovering from the war, that they noticed something. Barrels had been washing up on the shore, containing notes, messages that warn of an impending threat to civilization. These notes tell stories from survivors, survivors from distant civilizations that have been pillaged and completely destroyed by a huge pirate army. And unfortunately for our players, the notes say that those same pirates are on their way here very soon. Panicked by these foreboding messages, the remaining leaders held emergency meetings to warn their people of the incoming danger. Hopes 
are not at their highest, I will admit. But do not fret. I will make sure that we do not get killed. We will make it out alive. I promise you. Tama, how many people do you have? These are the last people who would not try to kill me. If it comes to a good number, four to five. Oh god. Mello, what, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna stay and defend Bri? Uh, we're going to St. Mary's to help them in the final fight. Well, everyone head over to the city hall now. Everyone head Wait. over to the city hall. Right. The bigger enemy and the great war will happen soon. Beebag is turning up here with over 70 pirates to take us all out. To end the civilizations that we created from the start of this event, we are not about to back down from this. And I know, guys, that some of you here are not PvPers. I know that some of you were builders, some of you were farmers, some of you were explorers. But now we all have to stand here and fight on this last day we may lose some people and if you die know you died serving for us all making sure that we survive despite his encouraging words quals knows deep down that there is almost no chance he'll be able to withstand the pirate invasion with the number of players he currently has he's going to need a lot more but the only other players that are left are what remains of the scattered with their own army that he'd just been at war with However, knowing that they are his only hope of saving civilization, he chose to forgive his former enemies and he broadcasted a message out to the former Imperial Islands in an attempt to plead the players he just fought against to join his coalition on St. Mary's. But sadly, there was no response. Quarles and Mello are on their own. It's now the morning of day 9 and nearly everywhere is still. It's so quiet. Cities. Castles and businesses that were once full of players are now empty. On St. Mary's, what remains of Quarles and Mello's coalition are nervously awaiting the coming invasion. They've done everything they can to prepare, but it isn't clear if it'll be enough. Meanwhile, on St. Agnes and on St. Martins, Tamer and Dynamite are wandering through the shells of their former nations, waiting for the impending apocalypse to arrive.
St. Martins, St. Agnes, Tresco, and Briar are all now empty, and the huge pirate army is on its way to St. Mary's to wipe out the last hope for civilization. Wait, there are St. Agnes players standing with them. All the players are standing together against the pirates. I'm, I can't believe it. I don't know what to say. Oh my. Well, the pirates are dropping all left, right, and center. The pirates have been defeated, and civilization has been saved by players from both the Coalition and the Witherin Empire. The two warring sides were able to forgive one another for their past conflicts because they realized that they were never really enemies in the first place, and that they were only fighting at all because of the ambitions of a few power-hungry dictators. Who would have thought, after everything that went down, we would be able to have at least one person from every island stand together as one? We don't like each other, you know that, but still we stood here today and fought as one against the pirates. To all those who died today, rest in peace of course, you will be remembered. To everyone else who fought here today and is still standing, congratulations to us all. We've managed to defeat these pirates which means we can now live in peace. Thank you all for joining us and glory to the islanders. Thank you. Over the following days, players moved back to their islands and efforts to rebuild and even expand their old homes began. On St. Martins, what remained of with area was demolished. The citadel was repaired and a memorial for Malti was constructed. On St. Agnes, Tacabel was reopened under new management. On Tresco, what was left of Diamond supporters, who'd been living underground the entire time, finally retook their island, and the Tresco police force was officially abolished. On Briar, the subway and the Rainforest Cafe continued to thrive, and Mello finally had a chance to officially open the Tresco Briar Bridge. He also rebuilt his council chair out of obsidian, just in case. And on St. Mary's, the council cleaned up the wreckage that all the battles had left behind, and finally completed the Star Castle. Quarles also officially gave Avoma the position of distribution guild leader, so that he can get all the spruce wood he wants. And speaking of Avoma, there's still one thing left for him to do. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Have a great day. Bye-bye.